Broadcasting from the studios of WKEN, where every day it's the weekend. It's the Ken Calvert Show with your host, Ken Calvert. Hi, everybody. It's Ken Calvert, and welcome to the cozy studios of WKEN, where every day is the weekend. Uh, Craig Shoemaker is my guest in the studio. Um, is that what we're calling this? What's that? A studio. Yeah, Why? It's your house. Or do you tell people that? Or yeah. did I did I just let the cat out of the bag? <laughs> they have some illusion. Yeah, right. <laughs> it's Ken Calvert high above Detroit in a penthouse. Yeah. But yeah, I'm here. Yeah. In, it's just really cool. I'm at Ken Calvert's house. And this is my first time here. That and I my wife told told me to close the door because she's out. She she has something called park and shop, and so she's out doing park and shop right now. And I said, when are you going to be home? Craig Shoemaker is stopping by. And she went, oh, God, tell him I said hi. I said, well, he'll probably be here. And so... Should I shut the door? Uh, no. <laughs> I think she'll come in and sort of like, actually, it might be kind of funny. Oh, oh yeah. My, it, she'll come in mid-podcast. Yeah, let her, let her interrupt. That's uh, it, the way... That's This is the new wave. We're, we're going yeah, to... Yeah, podcasting. So, I know. This must I, be so... This must be like you and I when we were growing up. I, my grandfather, I found a 78 record. Oh, yeah. And I went, what is this? Yeah. You know, and be, and, but at that time, I'm sure when he was playing 78s, that was the thing to play. Sure, yeah, but yeah. I, and I said, you're never going to need this because he had a big collection of them. I said, you'll never need these again. And little did I know that my 45s would also never be used again. You know, and I <laughs> or say... Or CDs for I, that matter. <laughs> Let me tell you something. The genesis of my career going back to 1973... We started with well, obviously the 33 and an R, yeah, and a couple of RPMs, and uh, then we went. I think we graduated years and years later to the CD. Well, and, before before that though was the eight track or the. Well, you're talking about people listening in their cars. No, you too though in the radio they used the well the we carts used, they called yeah them. we used carts for yeah. commercials mm -hmm. and uh, so they were around, but I mean it's it uh, I mean from that to. Well, we started with, with records, then CDs, and then we started just doing audio tracking, and it just, it it's all, it's totally and, different. And now we've actually gone backwards. We're in the back of your home. Yeah. <laughs> doing yeah. a podcast. Well, and, and, but but people now, the, the millennials and the younger people are loving vinyl. They They're do. They're all in on the vinyl. Well, it does have a, diff a different quality to it. That's what people you say. You be annoyed with the scratching. Now you want the scratching. It, absolutely. It has yeah. texture to it. Yeah, guys could say, hey, come here, come here, listen. Yeah. That really sounds good, doesn't it? And, and for a comic, I, uh, uh, your whole goal in life was to be on an album cover. Uh -huh. And then someday, kids would be cleaning their pot with your album cover. <laughs> yes, a yeah. double album cover. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Because that's how you shifted the seeds that's and stems exactly. and got it out of there. There you go. Uh, welcome to town. Craig Shoemaker is my guest. We, uh, I was doing a little homework here, and I can't possibly remember the first time first time we met, but I think it might have been in like the early... Probably, probably 30 years ago, something yeah, like that. I was I'm playing a, Ridley's. Yeah, and... Yeah, I've been coming here about 30 years, and uh, he's been open 40. I think his 40-year anniversary is coming 40, up. One of the oldest yep, clubs in the 40th anniversary is... Yes. I and, used to aspire to play there, and I, and he didn't book me at first. I played a... I played another place in the back of a bowling bowling lanes. That's that's how I got started in Michigan. <laughs> What's the name of that? I'm blanking on the name uh, of it. It was in Frazier. Alley. Well, it was in Frasier. Yeah, it was a comedy club. They had um, two of them, actually. Chaplains. Oh, How in the world well, could I forget Chaplains that? Chaplains actually came... I I thought Chaplains followed Mark Ridley, because Mark Ridley... They did, though, uh, but that, they were the first yeah. ones to book me. Uh, oh, they were the first. Yes. Oh, okay, and, and then there was a guy, Joey's. There was Joey's, Joey's yeah. Comedy Club. Right, yeah. And the competition was on, and I... It was I, a big scene. And I had a great relationship with Mark Ridley, so I didn't dare right. go outside the ropes, right. but I'd have friends like you, yeah. and I also had, I'm at that time, you know, uh, Tim Allen, of course, Mike Binder, and Dave Coulier, all from Detroit. I remember I remember meeting Tim Allen for the first time, and he didn't have, you know, what he has, obviously. Yeah, what he and has had not, That had not happened yet. But the one thing people ask me, like, what does it take to make it? The one thing he had, he had an undying belief in himself, even in an early stage in his career. I remember when he first moved to L.A., and I, we were co-headlining together in Vegas. Actually, we walked backstage, and Rodney Dangerfield was there. It was his... <laughs> 
and he was sniffing coke off of two women's breasts. Who was? Rodney was. Which I, I think was and, kind of commonplace for him, Yeah, right? and we all walk backstage, you know, where all the yeah. headliners work in his club, and, and he turns to us and he goes, Hey, how you doing, fellas? <laughs> you know why I do this? Because <laughs> I can. <laughs> it was just classic. But I remember having a conversation with Tim, and I said to him, because I was, I was out in L.A. at that time for a couple of years, I said, you know, you're going to have to study acting and stuff. He goes, I don't need to do that. <laughs> he goes, I have a Sears commercial that's running right now. <laughs> like, so that was his acting background. And I remember thinking to myself, wow, you're very confident about your acting ability. And sure enough, he ends up starring in Home Improvement. Like well, he was, he was doing that bit. He was doing that bit about um, just working around the house and, yeah. and men are pigs. Right. And that whole thing. And, and his mother saying, you all are a bunch of little pigs. You mm-hmm. know what I mean? Uh, yeah. Uh, uh, uh. You know what I mean? You yeah. just sit there at the table, and and that thing, one thing led to another, and it exploded. It exploded. For him. I was I was there totally when it exploded. Exploded for him. But he and the people that I know before they made it, that's the one thing they have in common. The ones who became big stars, uh-huh. they always had this undying belief in themselves, and I think that's one of the reasons I never like made it like big, big. Yeah, I'm too insecure. I'm no, not, I, I care know. about people's feelings. I, I think you made it big. Well, big. no, not big, big. You know, I'm certainly not. Uh, you know, tool time. I was on Tim's special that he hosted. That's <laughs> right. that's the level I got yeah. to. The, all, yeah. the comedy all stars. I think I went out there once and I was a walk on. Oh, really? Yeah, I was like, I wasn't I, even that. It was like a scene opening, and I got to walk by. There you go. You know, and I was like, okay, that was fun. You know, but well, my uh, big break was uh, being fired from the Magic Johnson talk show. I mean, that's how bad I made it. So, <laughs> that's right. Yeah, though, that was that was a big career highlight for me. How long did that show last? I lasted days. Uh huh. <laughs> they took me off the Why couch. Why did they take you off the couch? Oh, they, you know, it was just a failed concept. Yeah. And, you know, they, just, every time I tell a joke, he would go, "Oh, Craig, you are bad." <laughs> <laughs> It's he wasn't good. ready for that, though. No, he wasn't. He it was, was. It was a failed concept. It totally from was. From the beginning, and then they thought I would improve it, but that's just you know that's just that's just piling on more failure and falsehoods. Well, there was Binder, Coulier, and Tim Allen all graduating from. There are all the Detroit. Uh, uh, yeah, comics, the Detroit yeah. guys that did pretty well. Tom Sharp preceded him. Yeah, and that's Tom right. Sharp. I was thinking about him the other day. Tom Sharp did. I, I haven't. He heard was from, the hottest voice yeah. in Hollywood. You know you made it when I'm, I see the breakdown out there for voiceover work. Uh, right. They would say, looking for a Tom Sharp type. Yeah. And then you would get there, and there's all these dudes. And there's Tom Sharp, too, by the way. They're right. going, you want a Tom Sharp type? Why not hire a Tom Sharp? But he was always, like, the that's number right. one guy. Yeah. That's when I do. I, that's when I knew I did kind of make it. I saw on a breakdown they were looking for a Craig Shoemaker type. Um, that was very odd for me Isn't that, see. yeah, isn't that curious? Um Gosh, I got so many things going through my head right now that this is going to be longer than I thought it would be. It's okay. For you. And it's I know, okay. I know you got a podcast. Roll. You can let it go. I know you. Don't can. worry about my time. I'm uh, good. No. Okay. Well, let me let me just start then. Let me go back a little bit. And you and I and Ellen was another one. DeGeneres. We had a really good relationship. She would come to town, and for whatever reason, she really, really liked me. Now, yeah. I would like to think at the end of the day, before I go to the other side, that Ellen would say, God, I remember you so well from Detroit. Well, maybe someday I'll well, we, find we out. Well, we do. You know, we travel around the country. You know uh-huh. this, right? Yeah. And we get to know the radio personalities from different towns. Right. And you, I would put you in the... You know the Mount Rushmore. I mean, you're. Oh, that's uh, no. You're uh, a Mount Rushmore. I can think of maybe two or three others throughout the country. No edit there, but <laughs> and 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 all helped com- comedians develop our not only uh, our audience. You help with our audience, but you also help us with our our radio interviewing, and and that's a part of the business. I mentor comedians all the time. You know. Well, you got into. I tell them you have to be good with this too. You got into radio and had a, a successful radio program as well, and you know how radio has changed. And I talk mm-hmm. about that a lot. And one of the things now is less is more, and keep it tight and bright. And we can move the show to the podcast afterwards, and go to our podcast page, and you know, and you'll hear it again over the weekend and all that. But I can't do thirty seconds uh, with a comic. I can't do it. We used to open up the gates right. and just allow Craig Shoemaker to be the co-host. Right. You would stay for two hours. 
we would have other guests on the phone or partners see, or whatever. See, that's and a smart you, move. You would co-host. That's a smart move because it actually allows you. You don't have to do much that day. You don't have to. <laughs> you don't have to write any jokes or bits and go. No. I'll just let this guy roll. Yeah. yeah. And, but it's my show. Everybody's going to tune in the Ken Calvert show. So that's the thing. That's why there's a few radio personalities throughout the country that get that. And they, you were so capable of taking phone calls because people knew the act. And, of course, everybody would lean on the love master. Oh, yeah. And we'll get to the love master. <laughs> we'll save the love master. Um, that's my, that's my, that's my, ooh, ooh. That's, that well, for that's, me, for that's, me. that's your Tim Allen R, R, R. Right, right. Yeah. People don't realize when Tim goes R, R, R mm-hmm. on his signature, it's supposed to be, ah, 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 you know, <laughs> yeah, however he does it. <laughs> right. How many impersonations do you think overall you do i used to do a lot and i was known for it but i hardly do any anymore i mean i just stopped you know what happened was we just our society is very strange i mean there aren't there are no iconic characters anymore there's no cary grants and jimmy stewart's of the world you know what i mean because there's so many actors and actresses and it's just how many how many really stay the course yeah. you know there's no more jack nicholson you know he's even sean connery gene hackman these are guys that were iconic actors and now you've and, got to worry and they about were movie stars how many movie stars are there anymore and you've got to you've got to worry about them skipping the generation if you will yeah you know i mean uh, us it has uh, to be they have us. to be known by everyone if you do an impression of someone Everyone in the audience, you have to assume, you, knows who you're oh, doing. Yeah, and so I just stop bothering. There's you know? sort of a weird millennial block where people went back to the 80s and decided to walk away from the 90s mm-hmm. and early 2000, and now they're all back in, but they're all back in on what was happening in the 80s. Yeah. The 80s are hotter now than the 80s were in the 80s. I had a great 80s party recently. I own this big really? production company in L.A. Yeah. yeah. And uh, I, lo- I love jams. As you you know so many musicians. I sure. do, too. Actually, yeah. It's so strange. They Musicians love comedians. Mm-hmm. ACDC played my wedding. I mean, it's just... <laughs> You're kidding. I mean, no, I'm not kidding. Him. Come on. Oh, yeah. Yes. It's, it it got, got up with the wedding band. Imagine being the wedding band in Pennsylvania, and all of a sudden, <laughs> you're, you mind if I, uh, mind if I uh, sit in? Wow. What, what you put your right foot in. <laughs> anyway, it was really uh, that was quite a day. As long as you didn't do big balls. And then uh, no, we didn't do big balls. My grandmother was there, although she probably would have liked it more than anyone. Oh, but uh, you just put me on another one. <laughs> I want to kill you. The, Go ahead. I know I have ADD, and so do you. It's a t- yeah. It's going to be a tough interview. <laughs> this might last three hours. I'm supposed to be at my show tonight, but I'm just going to stay here and, right. hang, and hang out with you. But I had this party. You play the show at. The, I, I'm a production company, and I, I just, you know, I really, I'm trying to branch out so I don't have to travel as much. I want sure. to be with my family, and that's mm-hmm. a dream for me. And and I, so we opened up. I had this jam session. It was Kenny Loggins, Kevin Cronin, Ario Speedwagon, the Bangles. It was crazy. And uh, so I introduced Kenny, had never met Kevin from Mario Speedwagon. This is my parking lot. There's like 300 people. Howie Mandel was there. There's all these great people. Anyway, he tells a story <laughs> that only we got to hear. He says, you know, Kenny, this is Kevin talking. I, you know, I was very hot in the 80s, you know, very popular. And they gave us all these scripts. They gave us this script. It was very light on dialogue, a lot of action. I didn't really get it. And I didn't know who this Tom Cruise was. He goes, a movie called Top Gun. <sighs> And then Kenny goes, so you passed? He goes, I passed. And Kenny goes, thanks for passing. <laughs> he goes, they only offered me the volleyball scene. Then they called me and said, some guy passed. Danger Zone is yours. Wow. Made him millions of dollars. Come and then they on. did Danger Zone together in our parking lot. Yeah, it's, it was the most amazing night. Is, it was so cool. But this every, was all everyone went, at your wedding? No, this was, no, this was in a, a few a uh, couple months ago in my parking lot of the wow. production company. It was insane. For the 80s party. Yeah, it was like an 80s party, and people were just loving it. Yeah, people, 80s was... I mean, there's some great movies that came out of the 80s. Mm-hmm. The music, though, the soundtrack music was not that happening. With those synthesizers, there's yeah, a lot of that there going There was a, a, a ton of that Yeah, so musically, on. 70s was better. Well, yeah, you know, it was kind of the year of um, Head East and, and 
Never been any reason. Save my life. I'm going down for the last time. <laughs> it was like and, it didn't know what it was. The 80s, right. I think it was a, like a transitional no, period. It's so incredibly popular. Yeah. So you've got this production company. Yeah. You're back out on the road. Why in the hell are you back out on the road? Well, I did try retiring, and then I looked. You at, said I looked, you looked me in the eye one day, yeah. Craig Shoemaker, and said. I'm retiring. Yes. I, you know, you're I'm like done. Kiss. I'm you, done. Yeah. Yeah. You were. Well, or share. <laughs> yeah. Fair, <laughs> farewell to it. Do you know on this date in 1977, Elton John said in England, no. During a concert, I'm retiring. He did. In 1977? 1977. Wow. That's. Whatever. What how happens many, is. And look, he's appearing tonight live in fun. Cleveland, Ohio. I had a lot of comics that would say to me, You're not going to do it. And I said, No, really, I am. I'm committed to this. <laughs> and they said, you'll be back. And then now they said, oh, I knew you would be back. But it's for a different reason. They all think it's, oh, you need this, the adulation, the stage. And I said, I just need the money. <laughs> so well, uh, but I mean. Because we don't have a 401k. There's no plan for comedians. A lot of people don't realize that. Yeah. There's, a lot we, of people don't, we don't realize that. We don't have a union. Don't... We don't have any, any backup. We are absolute solo artists. We're the only ones that really are. There's no big record do, deals. And Do you know that. that that reminds me that bands now rely on touring. Oh, we've got to go there in a minute. They do. Uh, now, wait a minute. You realize what I just said, don't you? Touring <laughs> and, and, and merchandise. Because they're yeah. making nothing off of uh, album sales. No, it's Streaming true. has destroyed all profitability from rock and roll artists. That, so, that's why they... I mean, I have friends, actually... It's, Ario Speedwagon. He's on tour all the time. Right. We, we used to have our Kevin little... Cronin and I are yeah. very good friends because we go back to 1975. Oh, wow. You know, He's I my mean, neighbor. Cracking we the have seal. A, we have a bromance uh, breakfast together. Is that I just texted right? him, and he, sure enough, he couldn't make it again. I'm on tour still. I thought the whole summer thing was over, but yeah, there was Chicago. No, wait a minute. Wait, I just caught you. You slipped. What, I slept? You, tour? You said tour. That's the way you say it. No, I said... Oh, okay. You wait. say... Now, wait a minute. Don't do this to me. No, you don't do it to me. You you, you Midwesterners... Mid yeah, I know in the Midwest know, we say tour. You, and you say tournament. Yes, we do. We it's a say, tournament. It's a golf tournament. No, it's not a no, golf it's a tournament. No, it's a tournament. Springsteen doesn't go on tour. He goes on tour. <laughs> the mint. You don't go one, two, three, fur. <laughs> Well, You're not it, a golf curse. <laughs> I think Philly has it right on this one. Philly has the worst accent in history, but in this one, we've got it down, okay? All the right. Midwest does not have it down. <laughs> no, wait. Does Philly call what? Pop soda. No. Oh, yes. Oh, no, you no do. No pop. I don't know why. Do you call it pop? Oh, we call it pop. I know you do. Yeah, um, it's... That, you yeah. go down a few points. This is one of my favorite places on the planet. What? I do love Detroit? Michigan, but yeah. you, you you just take it down just a couple points. Hey, I know well, we do in Philadelphia. We say water. We go down quite a few. We say instead of you water. You say what? Water. What? I know. Somebody brought water? me a block of wood when I first said right, it can, out in Can LA. you get a Philly cheesesteak anywhere in, in outside of Philly? No. no Come it on. It doesn't exist. Why? Because of the bread. Have you tried the subway in I've, Philly? Have you tried... Really? Yeah, really? You're going to go there? Oh, you're you're going to go Subway with me? Oh, I mean, right. somebody's probably has a has one that comes close, like a transplant <laughs> Philadelphia. I tried to do it in L.A. I bought the rights to Tony Luke's out and, of Philadelphia. And? I'm not a restaurateur, so I quit. <laughs> I, 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 really? Everybody, everybody in the business told me, do not do this. What is it about it's the brand? Business. What's the secret? It's the water. Okay. Not the water, the but wa the water. The water <laughs> in that area, that's why there's great dough and pretzels, bagels, yeah. cheesesteaks, no. you know, the, the rolls. The, it's all from the water, and you can't have that water anywhere else in the country so. well you used to tell me that that you know and i agree with you yeah uh, and since then i've kind of said tour okay you know, i actually have <laughs> one of the things about being a voiceover announcer you don't say get you say get yeah and you don't say fur you say for yes. and i know some guys that say wednesday they do Wed yes and February, yeah. Oh, February was a big one. Yeah, but that one, that one's. I'm dicey on that one. I'm I not am quite too. Sure. I, I never quite got. But that I've either. never done Wednesday. But I know that. And, and, the, and the big you mean one, announcers? Yeah, the big one in radio. Of Show course. up on Wednesday. No, there are some do. guys that actually do that. Really? This coming Wednesday at Art Van. 
for one day only, Wednesday. But they kind of, you know, mash it a little bit. Do they? But they still get the D in there. But I remember the <laughs> you used to follow up the bid about Tur and, yeah. and Tor. Yeah. You were talking about the Texas guy. Oh, I said I and lost my I, pencil. He goes, that's all right. I got a peen. I said, a peen? <laughs> to do scratch our scores and fill in the ink later he goes no man i got an ink pen i said what do you mean it's a pen he try he laughs at me he tries to imitate me he goes no man it's not a pen it's a pen so i said to him how do you say the word the woman's name p-e-g what do you call her pig and he goes well that depends what she looks like that's a true story here's one for you now is that politically correct though oh i don't care oh i, I, mean, I am good. so I, not caring about that uh, it's starting to get here's, a little here's little, well yeah, here's yeah. the difference for me if i yeah. share a personal experience yeah you can judge me if i have an opinion okay then you can you know criticize me or whatever it is but if it's my personal experience, that's a real story that happened. That really happened? Yes. I can't, like, edit the guy that he said. That depends well what you look said. like. I'm just Thank telling you. you the story. Yeah. So you can, you know, take it for what it is. Yeah. And that's the thing. People are very sensitive. But you can't be as sensitive if I'm just sharing my... I came up with that years ago for my act. Is I, It's all storytelling. These are actual things that happen in my life. So you can judge it however you will, but... Yeah, we're very sensitive now. And oh, uh, it's you know what I. Gotta... I understand some of it, and you know we're all kind of adjusting here. But um, some of it I don't. Some yeah. of it I think we just go too far. We're looking for it, and you have to understand. Sometimes, you know, if I'm saying a char- that's a character that's saying, you know, it depends what she looks like, right? That's right. a character. Right. He exists, just like if you watch a movie. You know, there's there's slave owners that exist. There's there's you know murders that exist. They exist. So talking about them, you can't ignore that they that they exist. Well, and people will find a branch from what that remark was, by the way, and say, well, they shouldn't exist, and that's the pro- you know. Well, so that's, let's not even yeah. get into that because. By the, the way, fact- speaking of language, how do you say the word C O U P O N? It's a discount. Oh, get, how do you say it? Oh, are you gonna? I'm gonna say. How do you say it? Just say it. How you say it? Coupon. Oh, good. That's that's correct. Okay. Have you ever heard this one? They go coupon. I think my wife says coupon. She says coupon. <laughs> I think my wife says coupon. Does she have any vegetable soup in the other room? <laughs> in your Chevy Coupe. <laughs> I, I will take people you, down on language. You have solved the riddle. I think I have on some of these things. I think. Wow. I have. Do you do this on stage? No, I don't. No. Why? Well, you know, it's just. I usually tell stories about what's you, going on okay. with my life. All right. Well, f- and me, if that goes on in my life, if someone says the word coupon, I, I remember say talking to Jenny and Kathleen Madigan, Lewis Black. Uh, yeah. I mean, I'm not name dropping. I'm just saying that over. No, you've talked my, all of us. Yeah, I've talked to these guys, Gaffigan. I said something to Gaffigan. I, I guess I made a mistake. I stepped in it when I said, do you still do hot pockets? And mm-hmm. he went, if one more person walks up to me in an airport and goes, hot pockets. Really? And I was like, Jim, when the fans start saying, or when the fans stop saying hot pockets, mm-hmm. then you got to worry. You got to worry. Yeah. You know? I, I have it with Love Master, but it's not it's not as heavy. And g- the good thing about Love Master, I get to change the lines. I get to change the lyrics. Unlike it's a best of. It's like Springsteen doing Born sure. to Run. Do you save it till the end? I mean, yeah, and I, he does Born to Run. I can't. He can't change the lyrics. He can't go, baby. I'm born to trot. <laughs> I'm born to jog. You know, he can't. He can't change it. Love Master. I could. Co- I have hundreds of lines. So it's the character stays the same, which is what people want. You know, when they want a best of, but I get to change the lyrics. You're real cerebral, though. I mean, you're, you really, you kind of, you're a thinker. Occasionally. Uh, no, but I mean, it, it, you know, you tend uh, to go deep. My mind is, is. You tend to think out your humor, which I think is really cool. I, I personally like that. Well, you know what? I, I'll give you a little secret. Okay. Is I dive more into the deeper mindfulness consciousness of me, and that's where it comes from. It's so it's it's thought, but it's thought that's led by emotion. It's led by much deeper things than some people would, you know, usually wander into. So if I'm like telling a story, I will be in the story from my past. Uh, usually, it's some failure that took place, mm-hmm. and there's an attachment to it. So it's easy to, 
kind of go there because it's not some thought it's not just some thought that comes up an opinion that comes across my head is something that i'm really feeling passionate about usually you've had some highs and lows yeah yeah a lot of lows a lot of lows a lot of lows that lead to the highs more appreciation of the highs of course i told my son that the other day you know he's going through a little tough time right now how old is he uh, he's 20 in college, first year of college. Where's well, he going? He's in California, Pennsylvania. Okay. And uh, he's there. He was away. He's in the mountains. He's never. He was from, he's a California kid, the real California. Right. Now he's surfing on the, on the Monongahela River. Wow. It's, a, it's, a whole, <laughs> it's a whole other world for him. I said to him, um, I said, you know, the biggest things in life are when you take a risk, when you when you face a risk, uh, some big fear, and you get over that. When I went skydiving for the first time, and first of all, I went solo like an idiot. I didn't go with a buddy. Are you kidding me? I went me? solo, You're and insane. my radio was broken, so I had to find my own way down. So that was even scarier. But the, the, but the victory that I felt was just unbelievable. It lasted for days because, I, oh, I can do that. And... and if you just keep going over little bumps and little bumps, it's not gonna, it's not going to help you have that feeling of elation and and that you got through. So all these pains that I got through when I you know I was molested and kidnapped when I was a kid and come on yeah wait a minute uh, this is I bury the lead there <laughs> no, you buried the lead indeed no I I mean I that's you one were of the things kidnapped yeah that was one of the things that happened to me but all of these yeah. things all led to this. This inner Shangri-La that I live in today, because I wouldn't be able to appreciate it if I didn't go through this pain. Wow! And now, and know how to not only move through the pain but teach it to others. Wow! That's what my podcast is about: is helping others. And I get to and, kind of bring the wisdom to people. Yeah, I tap into that, and that's what I bring to most everything that I do. I try to anyway. Did you escape through comedy? Oh yeah, not I didn't escape from the kidnapper from comedy. No, <laughs> said, hey no. buddy, you gotta let me go here. <laughs> no. I gotta, I gotta set at the comedy at the <laughs> Chuckle Hut. How old were you? Uh, Thirteen. Wow. Yeah, it was a guy that uh, he befriended me. I didn't have a dad, and that's who they always prey upon. You know, when that Sandusky thing came out, I was yeah. so much opposed to. This is so. I, I, I'm sorry. We, we live I'm, in a society. I'm uncomfortable, that, but I have to. Are you really? Yeah. No, I, but I want to follow. No, it's I okay. Wanna... It's our, I am way, way fine with it. Okay. You know, I don't have to get descriptive. Just know that I made it through, and you know, he took me away to Washington D.C. to a ghetto hotel with a like a skeleton key to get into this room and it was just awful and i was in there for five days and obviously i got out i'm here wow and you know it taught me a lot of lessons in life yeah you know you got to really you know uh not just give trust away so fast you know i let and not be desperate i was so desperate for a father that i ignored certain signals and i ended up with this i wanted uh, this male bonding so much that I ended up, uh, you know, I and I go into denial. There's all these things that you take through life, you know, that that I build up as a child, and now I get to to really learn from them and then pass it on to others, including my children. How are you doing that? Well, I just I know you said your podcast, which is re- yeah. relatively new. Well, the uh, the other thing is, so people don't know that I'm kidnapped and molested. Usually, I don't really reveal it. I definitely don't talk about it on stage. It makes people very uncomfortable. Uh, yeah. But they get to see an example if they ever ask me how I got to this place of of peace. I have inner peace now, and I'm very, very happy. And if I if they ever ask me, I will share it with them how I got there. There's, mm-hmm. like, all these avenues that I took. They obviously see a person on stage that's having a blast. Yeah. And yeah. how did I get to that place? I didn't get there from from accolades. I didn't get there from awards. None of those things ever sufficed. It was all the stuff off the stage that led to... It, my act has actually never been better. Yeah. That's that, what's weird. Wow, about, that's... You know. uh, I mean... <laughs> it's I, very centered now yeah, because I'm well, so I, grounded well, in I'm, this space. Uh, I selfishly have one final question about that and then I want to move on. Nobody ever wants to talk about kidnapping. <laughs> no, I know, but I want to know. I want to. I got to. It wasn't on your. Wasn't no, on your sheet I, of I gotta, questions. No, it wasn't. I want to put a period on the sentence because, mm-hmm. boy, that's that's uh, a part of your life that I never knew about, and it. Yeah, most people it don't. Aff- it affects me, and that because um, <laughs> I cried during Caddyshack. 
Oh, <laughs> I just had to talk with my son. We did a TV pilot. I said, what's your cry movie? And he said, Armageddon. I said, I'm crying that that's your cry movie. <laughs> that's how I raised you to cry yeah. at Armageddon? He yeah. goes, oh, yeah, Dad. i got to ask you just real quickly, yeah. selfishly. Was he caught? The guy. No. Actually, one of the di- most difficult things for me to accept when I was a kid was I told my mom. That's the only person I ever yeah. told. She said, don't you ever tell anyone. Really? She said, first of all, they won't believe you. She had a number of reasons. Yeah. And then, yeah, that was my biggest, um, like, I felt betrayed by my mom. And she's done many betrayals since that time. I have the most difficult time accepting that because I'm the child. And if somebody did that to my kid, I would, I probably would kill them. I would commit and, my and, life. And um, she didn't do anything. And, you know, I was a 13-year-old kid. I didn't know what to do. And yeah. she, she was only angry that he called her at 3 in the morning. I remember her going, can you believe he woke me up at 3 in the morning? I go, can you believe he kidnapped your kid? I mean, I mean like, wow. that's just, but, that you know, it's she came from a generation that yep. doesn't deal well with you stuff like that. You are so correct about that. That's a, it's it's a, put just, in a compartment. Yep, they do. This yep. is how the Cubs, the Cub Scout, the Boy Scout leaders get away with it and the priests. They're all in this patriarchal world where you turn your head in denial. Our Parks and Rec guy, he was molesting kids like crazy. I remember when I was a kid, I was so angry that he didn't have me as part of the club because they all had jobs with the with the community. Turns out he's molesting all these kids. Thank God he didn't choose me. Well, I would have been on the list too. But they were going to name a park after this guy, except for my friend Paul was brave enough to say no. He, he stood up against he's this. He's a bad man. He's well, a, there's a lot of them, and but they and get I away feel, with it because they know that people turn their heads in denial. I, you know, well... So I'm a big advocate for well, you know, this. That's um, ch- children's rights. That's a that's a powerful sidebar mm-hmm. that uh, will certainly uh, resonate with me for at least a couple of days, <laughs> if not longer. <laughs> and every time I see you, I did the not. The bottom line is, you I know, did what, not know that, and I don't know what people say at this point. I'm sorry that that happened. Yeah, yeah no, I mean, I'm of course I'm sorry, but I'm, it's also one of the greatest pieces of education I could have ever received because of the journey where it took me to whereas now I get to give back now I get to share experience these are the things that kind of I, I put my these are my qualifications for this higher education if you will right pardon me have you ever written a book about this I wrote a book I know you wrote a book I wrote a book called Love Mastered and, right. and there was parts in the book where the book was that uh, this woman says to me on private message on Facebook, I thought you want to know Matt and I are divorcing after years of marriage. And, and literally this new self of me, my insides, responded to her in a way she was not expecting from a comedian. Nobody ever expects comedians to go to this level of life. Right. They just think, hey, it's joke time. And they always think there's a joke around the bend. I'm sure you did when I said, kid, I have to molest it. Okay. No, and then I, I walked no, into no, a bar. I did, no, I did but not. But I mean, I, many people. That, well, that's but I'm what sitting they expect across from you, so I could tell. Yeah, right. I, I knew for a fact right. you were well, serious you, yeah. when you said that. But uh, so I responded to her in a way, and our book is an exchange over a year and a half with her on private message on Facebook, helping her through this painful process called the t- divorce. The title of that book is it's called Love Mastered with an apostrophe D, and uh, it was a it's a digital journey to love and happiness. And by by midway through the book, I'm going, oh my god, she's such a great writer. I kind of brought that out in her too. I became amused for her. I couldn't wait to go back to my hotel room. It was, it was almost like a, it was like a, almost like a love affair. But my wife was very much aware of it, and you know, because it was just so beautiful. It was two people exchanging loving notes, yeah. helping one another. Wow. Mostly me with her. Yeah. And at the end of the book, believe it or not, <laughs> I said, "I'm calling you. Give me your number. I'm calling you." She was like a fan. I didn't even know her. Three thousand miles away, I called her. And I said, "Listen." My friend is divorcing. He was also in an abusive relationship, and I fixed them up, and they've never been in, and they're madly in love happily ever after. Pretty crazy, right? Wow. 3,000 miles away. Yeah. Okay, you've connected a lot of dots for me in the last 15 minutes. <laughs> i got to tell you something. Craig Shoemaker is my guest. You know, the one wonderful thing about podcasts, uh, you don't have to refresh because you don't have new listeners tuning in all the time. Very true. People are just listening, and uh, but I like to remind them it's an old habit, and I kind of like to hear it because it allows me to reset. You've been through a lot, ups and downs, and highly successful. Your act is very clean for the most part. Yeah, pretty much. Yeah, pretty I go much. innuendo, yeah. Um, clean comics are, uh, there are 
Only a few, according to Dave Coulier, and Dave Coulier is extremely clean. He's very clean. Yeah, yeah and he said there's a space for that. Mm-hmm. And Gaffigan, of course, is very clean. Yeah, you're right. Um, you are out on, on tour, tour. <laughs> <laughs> I'll forever kill you for, for making me do that. But you do do... I've always been offended by comedians, and we got there once, but let's just do it again, Mm -hmm. that don't do their greatest hits. People come to see Craig Shoemaker knowing... No, I do. ...that they're going to hear... I I absolutely do. Um, And here's where I'm I'm going. I'm too codependent not to, because then they'll complain to me afterwards. You know where I'm going. No, I don't. I have several greatest hits, fortunately. All right, well, here... My grandmother with the reefer? No. (laughs) You knew it. You is that what it was? You're pretty damn good, bro. No, number one was Barney Fife. Oh, Barney Fife. Pleasantville. Yeah. One of my favorite movies. I looped him. I, half, Great. half the movie is my voice because I'm yeah. too sick to be there. <laughs> Tell him the story. Yeah. I, I. Well, first of all, I got a call from his daughter. Mm-hmm. You don't know this story. And she, uh, you know, his name's Don. Don't Knox. make me get tissues again. No, 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 no tissues <laughs> on this. But it is, it is crazy for little Craig, who grew up, you know, fatherless, and he was like an uncle to me. And Andy Griffith was like a dad. I'd come home and watch them on TV on reruns when I was oh, a little boy, and sure. it was comfort food for a, a kid who was lost. Nip it. <laughs> but the, it was such a just a homespun story. Yep. And he listened to his kid and. That's what all I wanted. I just wanted this male figure to listen to me. Gee, Ope, you know. He, mm-hmm. he, I thought, wow, if I only had a guy that would do that. So, so she calls me up, uh, Karen Knotts, and she says, "I'm doing a book about my dad. It's called Tied Up in Knots, and you were his favorite comedian, and I want you in the book." And I went, "Whoa!" I mean, that blew me away. This, and then I realized as I'm talking to her what this guy meant to me was not only the comfort food and, and all the great movies, Reluctant Astronaut and Mr. Limpet, and he was Mr. Furley on Three's Company. The guys that couldn't shoot straight. All of it. Yeah. He was the biggest star. He was I like, loved he him. He won more Emmys than anyone. I loved him. In history. He was he a was great, great character. And I yeah. related to him because I was really little, little and skinny, yeah. so I related to the guy. So I'm telling her the story, and I realized he's meant stuff my showbiz career the first time ever on television dave coulier was the host <laughs> of america's funniest people yes and i won ten thousand dollars <laughs> wow yeah and with barney fife fighting the cowardly lion that was the little bit that, <laughs> uh, i'll put him up uh, 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 put him. all right mr lion See, i can't do it because my voice is messed yeah. up today so I'm, back up these are certified lethal weapons there mr lion <laughs> So I have $10,000. Next time, my first time ever on television was Matlock, starring Andy Griffith, and and he would have Don Knotts on the show. Right. I did two guest starring things on there, my first ones ever. Then in 1996, I do a comic relief. It was my big breakout. And he was there that night backstage because he was on with the Steve Allen show. They were doing a big member of... What do they call it? Memorial? Not yeah. Memorial, but whatever they... They were featuring the Steve Allen show on Comic Relief. And he's watching me on the monitor. And he's old, and he turns to Steve Allen. And he goes, he does me pretty good, doesn't he, Steve? <laughs> and people said it was the most fascinating thing to watch him watch me on a monitor live at Universal Studios. And then they did, we did a press conference together. And I have a photo of me and him hanging out for an hour, just just... And it was so cool. And by the way, little side note, someone told me he's hung like a hockey stick, right? <laughs> really? Yeah. yeah. Now I'm just going to ask you personally. That's a Milton Burl. Yeah. But uh, him story. too. Yeah. Would you look? Would you, so I, I meet the guy. We're on a couch. <laughs> and we're talking for an hour. Come on. Would you do a pecker checker? <laughs> Come on. Be honest with me. Yes. You would. Okay. If, if that was the lore, <laughs> I would want to confirm it. You want to confirm? So yes. I'm, I'm like talking to him. He's, yes, he's, I he's would. all serious. I was born in West Virginia. <laughs> and I'm going, are those pleats? Are those pleats? Is that, is that a pleat or is that the actual what I heard? But anyway, and then I ended up, uh, Pleasantville uh, called me. They said he's sick. He can't make it. He played the TV repairman. So you know, bud. Ha- yeah. You know, bud. So half the movie is me imitating him as an old guy going, he circles the apple on the ter- telestrator. It's my voice going, 
Boom, what do you call it right, right there, bud? The forbidden fruit here in Pleasantville. I'm the TV repairman. So if you watch the movie, oh. see if you can hear my voice. Well, I, I highly recommend that people do that. The, the one bit that I used to do on the 5 o'clock funnies, I had the 5 o'clock funnies every night, WCSX. Made our careers. Yeah, and, and I'll tell you the one that always people would say, well, you can, can you do... That there are drugs in May, <laughs> drugs in Mayberry. That was an old classic. Well, how'd that one go? Oh, well, first of all, you were oh Floyd, Floyd, Floyd. Here you go, Floyd. Ooh, 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 ooh. I'm high as you can. <laughs> but Floyd, ooh, it is so good. Ooh, ooh. How bad it end be? And and there are seeds in my marijuana. <laughs> But well, you, you said that Floyd was the seller. He was the dealer. He, he was the dealer, rather. Ooh, ooh, yeah. ooh, good reefer. I got. Uh, I forget. Uh, hell, of, hell of a quaalude. Uh, wow, Andy. look at you. You know my act. I hell forgot. Hell of a quaalude. Uh, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> he's got the good stuff. I can't do it anymore on stage. Nobody knows who the hell he is. Oh, I think from reruns now. I mean, between. They, no, I, I, I mean, check look, the look at. I was talking to Coulier about this. I mean, he, I mean, his career was reinvented by Full House. Being on whatever you know and now Fuller House. I wrote no, on the Full, show. I wrote on the Full, show Fuller House. Fuller House. You wrote. You were a writer. I was a writer for no season kidding. two. Yeah, yeah. God, I love doing this. I, I mean, it was such a weird experience though, going from stand up where you're everybody's applauding for you yeah. to walking in a room with twelve people like jury duty who right. hate you. you know, <laughs> I always love the expression, that, and I think people find it sexy when. You you talk about Tim Allen, and I said, well, on Monday they do a table read. Yeah. You know, What's that? Well, everybody sits around, and they, they read it for the very first time. And, you know, by the way, that was one of the highlights of me being a writer was I played all the characters on the table read who weren't cast yet. Oh. So all the guest stars I played, like Alan Thicke was on, Rest of Soul. He was, sure. he was one of the guest stars, but before he did it, I brought it alive for the writers to rewrite and stuff like that with the table read. I got to know the actors really well. Wow. And them I got along with better than the writers. Because the writers, I had a deal where I could still do stand-up, and I would come back into the writer's room and I, with a tan. they go, where were you? I was, I was in Hawaii. Where were you? Where I was in the room. <laughs> Without you. Yeah, yeah Mr. Right. Mr. Big Celebrity. Because the rest of them were writers and not stand-ups. Craig Shoemaker is my guest. A quick one. Yeah. What? Uh, people often say to me, is it Greg or is it Craig? Oh Does God. that drive you insane? Well, yeah, it's Greg is drives me insane. Uh -huh. I've got two of them. Yeah. Schumacher. Oh, you, because of the yeah, well, the Formula you, One driver. Well, right. Or it's but my name is spelled Shoe and Maker. You can uh -huh. take your shoes to the maker. That's right. You don't you make shoes. You don't so you don't mock shoes unless they're crocs. Obviously, in those your, you can mock crocs. Obviously, in your in, yeah. in, in your DNA somewhere at some time there was so, a shoemaker. Oh, there was a shoemaker yeah. in the family. I've received none of that money. Not even a not even a so that does offend a you. A lace or go, a tongue. Hey, Greg, uh, can you do me we a got favor? got Greg Schumacher, my favorite comedian. Oh. I go out of my mind. Yeah, it's Craig Shoemaker. I thought about changing it when I first got into show business. Really? Uh, yeah. To what? I don't know. Greg? <laughs> I was thinking about going with Tim Dick. <laughs> That's right. That's Tim Allen's real name. Yeah, I was thinking it's, about... It's Tim Dick. I mean, he wasn't using it, so... I, I remember watching Dick. Oprah, um, and I don't know what the show was. It might have been The View in the very, very early days before it got so incredibly politically charged to that... I've just walked away from anything now. I just want to watch sports and comedy. Mm -hmm. That's all I want to do. Yeah. I don't. I don't participate in the arena. I don't show my cards. I learned a long time ago that if you do, you're going to div divide the room. It's you know it's, what's so odd about it though is is I talk about my reaction to something inside my inside reaction to something, mm -hmm. and you can't again you can't deny that. For instance, Donald Trump. You know, obviously everyone has a reaction to this guy. Why are we not allowed to share it? They always say, don't talk politics and religion. You know why they say that? Because the leaders of politics and religion don't want you to be, don't want to be exposed. Right. So there's the rule that allows them to be behind the curtain. And we're just trying to be Toto saying, no, really, there's a lot of BS back here. Yeah, but, but you're not allowed to approach it because of their rules of you can't talk about it. But I think you had an opinion about commercials that could possibly be a commercial about the commercial. 
Yeah. As a, not as opposed to a corrective commercial. Right. Where so and so, so and so says that he never really attended that event. Well, the thing is, what I say about this is like, for instance, Donald Trump. My son was watching. Now, this is a true story. He's nine years old. He's watching the debates, the Republican debates. And they were going at it, penis size and everything. <laughs> and his observation was, he goes, Dad, what's up with Mr. Drunk? He calls him Mr. Drunk. I guess because his perception was, as a nine-year-old, he looks like a drunk when he's, you know, flailing away and talking about people's lying. He's a liar and this one's going at it. He was looking at these adults saying, oh, my God, they, they look like drunks. So if I say that, people go, it's political. No, I would say that before any, any one of them ran for office, if I knew them, I happen to know Trump, and if it, this is my experience, it's my experience. So why are you so upset? And if you have such faith in your religion or your, and belief in your party, then why does my little word have anything to do with it? How can I knock you off of your faith? Right, and, and, and I came across a line a long time ago and I've always used it, which is uh, let us always concentrate on what unites us rather than what divides us. That's and right. I want to, instead of putting a yard sign out there with a name on it, I want to put a yard sign out there with that on it. You know? Or how about put some jokes? Why yeah. don't you put some yeah. jokes out there? You know, why don't Every you, day why don't on you go sign, see put Greg? A, put another joke out there. Why don't you see Greg, Greg Schumacher <laughs> <laughs> at Mark Ridley's Comedy Castle tonight? Um, I well, wanted, but I w- we should we do need that's the unifying thing I talk about this in my act I have an organization called Laughter Heals there's one neutral I know party all about it there is one neutral party out there and that's laughter yep the the art of laughter not comedy extend your life extend your life your and life. extends you past all of those concerns and fears and hypocrisies and fe- all of that when the people are in an audience, do you think that everyone's in my audience going, "Hey, did you all vote for the same people?" No, we don't. Of course, know they couldn't. They have, have no idea. They, they have no idea who voted for who because we're all just one, yeah. which we should be in a United States anyway. Yeah. So there should be more laughter, more laughter lobbies instead of people going getting more money so you can pass a drug that's going to kill us. Laughter is the best medicine. So why are we not concentrating more money and put it into laughter? The FCC. They're all against us, right? They all, they try to censor and monitor what we say because right. we're going to offend the kids. Meanwhile, the kids, what were they watching on TV? Rape, molestation, schoolyard shootings. You think I'm going to I'm going to foul them up with a, a little curse word? <laughs> <You're> right. <laughs> no, the FDA allows every drug to be out there for an opioid addiction. What if people were addicted to laughter? That'd be a great thing. I think that you know what you're onto something. I think so too, you're but truly, there's not enough truly, money behind it. All right, listen. I'm going Tell Tim Allen to take those damn millions and put it towards that. <laughs> right? Yeah, well, I'll, I'll send him an email today. Please. I Say, will. Shoemaker says hi. Give me a, And tell him to give Shoemaker a little extra part on the show. <laughs> a little walk on well, so I can Leno. get my sag insurance. He's got insurance. Jay Leno working again, so... Uh, What's that? Jay Leno's on the show now. No. Yeah. On yeah. Tim Allen's show? On Tim Allen's show. He's a car mechanic. Oh, my... Cool. Playing playing yeah. himself? Yep. Yeah. Playing... No, he's playing... I don't know the oh, name they of love the character. Cars, those two. Yeah, but oh, those two. Yeah. Uh, uh, uh. Um, He's got. Uh, uh, uh. Oh, now, okay, that was I not. That, by the way, that I was not. Some... That was not a mean spirited. Uh, uh, uh. Somebody it, has it, a carburetor problem here, Tim. <laughs> <laughs> that was a jealousy remark, is what it was on our part. Um, I remember, and I want to end with this, if we, unless you want to just keep going. But I, I want to. I, I remember one time seeing you, having you on the air. And we and we we were doing the Love Master, and I remember Oprah, not Oprah. I take that back. It was Whoopi Goldberg. It was the early stages of the View. I started this or this part of it earlier. Mm-hmm. She said, "The funniest human I've ever met in my life is a guy by the name of." Cr- Cr- <laughs> <laughs> now you know what I want to do. I want to say Greg Schumacher, <laughs> Craig Schumacher, and the Love Master. She has been. You know, there's. We're, I just mentioned about Tim. You know, I was kind of joking about, hey, give me a little part. You know, she's the only one in my whole show business career that ever did anything for me. Is that right? No one ever has ever gone out of their way or said, here's a part or here's even an audition. She did it two times. She put me on Hollywood Squares. I ended up doing 75 of them. I remember Which, by that. the way, as a kid, was a dream because... I wanted Paul Lynn to be my father. Oh. I wrote him letters to fix him up with my mother. <laughs> and I thought we were going to be the first father and son team on the Hollywood Squares. That was my dream. 
I'd like Craig and Paul Lynn for the win, please. Take it, son. It's a sports question. <laughs> that was my dream, and she put me in that in there, and she got me on Comic Relief too, which was a big breakout. Wow! And, she, and Whoopi and I, but I did she, the. I, she and, loved the Love Master. Yeah, she does. Love she it. absolutely. I think she went. She's so on the far, cover of my book too. She I think. I think she. My book. I think she went so far as to say that near the end, she wants you to show up bedside. And just do the love, oh, love yeah, master. Yeah. yeah. So, all right. I'll curl that hair some more, baby. <laughs> Where did the love master come from? He comes from. Now you're going to relate to this because okay. I know in radio you can relate to this. <laughs> you were a geek growing up, right? Uh-huh, I was. Yeah, that's why we get into radio because we want all the girls to like us because <laughs> yeah, right. we're now we're now famous radio people. Yeah, we right. couldn't get there the other way, so we <laughs> took radio. Anyway, I was a geek in high school, and all the girls would use the F word with me. You know, friend. I was always the friend. You remember they pee together in high school? They all pee together? Yeah. They took me with them. That's what a geek I was. Wow. They let me in on the posse pee. Wow. And they'd be there, you know, back then they smoked cigarettes in the bathroom. Oh, sure. they go, he's so hot. They were always talking about bad guys. Mm-hmm. And I was the good guy. Yeah. And I'm, I thought to myself... Oh, give the geek a chance. If you know what was in here, I'm the love master, baby. Oh, baby. I'll have you begging like PBS on a pledge drive, baby. Yo, yeah. Oh, I'm longer than the DMV line, baby. I pull my pants down. You'll have a pet adoption. Oh, yeah. Oh, and that's keep going. And that's keep going. Oh, I got tons of them. Oh. Your knees knocking like a Jehovah's Witness on a pledge. Right, baby. I'll do you on the lawn. We'll get arrested for smoking grass. Oh, yeah. That's right, baby. You like French food? Well, bon appetit. I'll flip you so much you'll think you're an IHOP. I'll tap you like a Russian hacker. That's right, baby. I'm the love master. You'll be trembling like Subway Jared in the prison shop. Five dollar foot long. Oh yeah, baby. I'm so big I make flesh eating bacteria gag. What about Star Wars? Come on up here, baby. I'll show you Chewbacca. <laughs> yeah, in space nobody can hear your safe word. <laughs> You had me do my, my oh. love master here in, oh my in a room with just you. That was a little oh creepy. Oh, my God. A little creepy. Well, wait a minute. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. oh. But you you really helped you know, help my career, and you know that's why I'm here oh. in your back room uh, on a Saturday <laughs> afternoon before my show. On a fall day in Michigan using with up some my sun. Voice. All right, well, then I'll let you go because we've got an no, hour. No, no, that's okay. we got an hour, bro. Uh, in summary, is there anything that I missed that people should know about and places to go Well, for it, them to find out more you about You couldn't find Greg. my podcast. I couldn't no, find that's, it. That's, I'm going to have to talk to my people. It just started. It's called Craig Shoemaker, Can I Help You? It's, oh. it's really about... Me giving back because I truly get the most out of life from giving things to people, whether it's mentorship or guidance or whatever it is, fixing people with fix them. I've fixed up nine marriages all so far. I just really like helping people. So I guess it, part of it is I wish that someone had helped me when I was a kid. Yeah, I just wish that I had someone to look back on. Yeah, I where they were a mentor or. Yeah. You know, or a guide, or somebody who's just there in in a supportive sense, and I think that's what you know propels me. And I, I really like it. You know, I don't make any money with podcasting, that's for sure. So hopefully, no, people we, will download. We all know that. Believe me. Go to craigshoemaker.com. dot com. I guess you could find it there. Yeah. I hope so. It's, I'm great, gonna, it's a great website. I'm going to check and, all and this and out. Yeah, but I check it back. all out. But yeah. uh, and then and, I'm and Craig be, Shoe on Instagram and the Love Master on Twitter. Yeah, you're big on Instagram. Yeah. yeah. Well, not no. I'm not, I'm not verified I'm brand, yet. I'm pissed. Do you know what? I'm, Are you? Do you know I'm brand new. Oh, you don't have the little oh, check mark. Oh no, I'm just. Uh, I'm just. You know, I've got a. I've got a really uh, young comedian guy by the name of Nate Armbruster, who's a great, great guy. Yeah. And he helps me with everything. Oh, does he? And he's like, you got to be on Instagram. You do. And I was yeah. like, I haven't been on. And so I know you uh, and I come from the Polaroid generation. I, yeah, I know, guys. absolutely. We'll put, put Polaroids on a billboard or on a. On a billboard. I want you to know that you'll always remain one of my favorite all-time <sighs> comedians, friends, thank you, and man. personalities. Appreciate and it. it's been way too long since we had a chance to get together. 
Yeah, yeah. Well, I'm glad I got to do this. I, I wasn't doing anything. I was just watching uh, Blindside in my hotel room. So, <laughs> so. <laughs> I don't want to make it seem like I had nothing else to do. And I'm I'm here because I wanted to hang with you and see. You. I it's been a while. And uh, what better excuse to have two microphones in front of us? Because yeah. that really gets us going. And the quality, by the way, one of the things that I do like about podcasting is the fact that I lean on quality. So it'll sound great when it goes up, and you'll okay. hear it in about one hour. You'll get rid of my cold? <laughs> well, if you want, I can do some processing. Yeah, sure. Put I some, can do some processing. Put some effects in what there. What the heck? We'll do that. Oh, I'm not going yeah, <laughs> to... I'm not too sick. I got a meat thermometer for the ladies right here, baby. You like comedy? Open up and say, ha, ha. (laughs) The love master. But I'm an easy laugh. I always think of Rodney Dangerfield going, I like you. I like you. You got a good laugh. Yeah, I'll tell you. I like this guy. Hey. hey. He's got a good laugh. Oh, man. Let's get up front. Yeah, yeah. Final question. Yeah. Why is there a doctor in front of your name? Well, I submitted all, you know, I've studied laughter heals for years. My best friend got brain cancer, and oh. that was in one, another one of those moments. They gave God. me three months to live. Too much of that going on at And I age, said, uh, what can I do about this? And I certainly have been in the laughter business, and many people had told me through the years. I've had people even tell me they couldn't have children. Actually, the first one was in Michigan. They come up after the show, and they said, listen, uh, I thought it was a regular thank you. I was like, oh, thanks. They go, no, really. We couldn't have a child, and we went home, and he pretended he was the love master. I guess things loosened up, and they have a little baby girl. No kidding. This has happened many times, and including my buddy, my best friend, he's a director, Michael Goldberg. He, his wife was ovulating. We're actually watching, again, Michigan. We're watching the Lions against the Eagles in the playoffs years ago. Yeah. Remember the playoffs? Yeah. Anyway, um, you so son of and a bitch. the baby was conceived. Nine months later, she was born. Kayla, but then a year and a half after, he got brain cancer, and they said you have three months to live. And that was the moment I formed Laughter Heals, and uh, he came to all of our workshops, and he lived fifteen years past that prognosis. No kidding. Fifteen years from really? adding joy and laughter, it oxygenates your body. It does so many, it relieves stress, so, it does so many things for you. It's an so honor, I submitted this, it, yes, honorary doctorate. and they gave me a doctorate at uh, California, Pennsylvania. Outstanding. Yeah. God bless you, so bro. So I'm now, uh, yeah, Dr. Shoemaker, giving out, uh, doling out prescriptions of, of, of laughter and levity. And love. Yeah, and um, love, yeah. And Dr. Yeah. Um, Greg Schum- <laughs> Schumacher has been my guest. I'll kill you. I know you will. I came all this way. I know, to be. Took a freaking Uber. <laughs> oh, God, I hear I'll call and put it on mine on the way back, if that'll make you feel better. All right, so I've got one-way Uber. (laughs) (laughs) Right. I can get that done for you. Thanks for listening, everybody. It's the uh, (laughs) Ken Calvert Podcast, Cozy Studios of WKEN. And thank you for probably what I'm going to consider to be the best one yet, (laughs) Craig Shoemaker. We'll see you next time. You can subscribe to the Ken Calvert Show podcast on Apple iTunes, TuneIn, Stitcher, Spotify, or iHeartRadio. It's also available by going directly to www.thekencalvertshow.com. You can reach Ken at kencalvertpodcast at gmail.com. The preceding program is the property of Ken Calvert and may not be rebroadcast without the written permission of Ken Calvert.